Hi, I'm Noel with CreationEffects.com, and today I'm happy as a lark because I get to show you the newest effect from Creation Effects. It's called Flocks, and it lets you create flocks of birds in Adobe After Effects. So you can put realistic 3D flocks into your shots or motion graphics, and uh, it gives you a ton of control over their look and their flight behavior, and uh, you can have virtually unlimited birds in your flock, and you can make them fly wherever you want and view them from any angle. It comes with 12 different species, and that includes a bat. And uh, if you have the images, you can make this work for any flying creature. So like a dragon or a pterodactyl, you can just swap out the images. Uh, it also comes with a project file for the demo video. So all of these animations that you're seeing now, those are included. And another cool thing you can do with this is create murmurations, which are these mesmerizing, flowing flocks of starlings that you've probably seen videos of. So if you haven't got it already, check it out. It's at creationeffects.com. It's a hoot. And I'm very excited about it. And uh, best of all, it's really cheap, cheap. And as part of the same series, you can also check out swarms and schools. And you can get them bundled with flocks if that interests you. All right, so without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. And uh, by the way, I want to apologize right off the bat about all the puns. Uh, you may not appreciate it, uh, but whatever. I have no egrets. So I'm going to really fly through this because there's a lot to talk about. First of all, I'll talk about how the effect is set up and how to choose the right flock for your project. Then I'll show how to add birds to the flock. Then how to make the flock fly where you want. Then we'll look at all the customization controls so that you can change the flight behavior. Then I'll go over some basic compositing techniques. Then I'll show you how to make a starling murmuration. And I'll end uh, by sharing a number of miscellaneous tips that will be very helpful to you, I think. Uh, just some things I learned while using the template. So to get started, let me show you how to open the zip file. Uh, there is a wrong way and a right way to do it because you might open the project and get this error saying all the files are missing. Uh, but before you cry foul and write me an angry message, just right-click the zip file and choose the Extract All option. And that'll prevent uh, the errors. That's just for PC users. If you're on a Mac, uh, just double-click it. Then you can open the folder and you'll see a couple project files. Uh, the project file for the demo video is here, so if you want to use one of the animations from the demo video as your starting point, uh, look no further than right here. Uh, you can just open this file in After Effects. Uh, this project will only open in Creative Cloud 2018 or later, because uh, that's what I made it in. But it can save you time. Uh, so if you want vultures that are circling, or geese flying in a V formation, or startled crows, anything that you saw in the video, all of that stuff is already set up in this demo project, uh, whereas in the main template, it's more of a, a blank slate, so you can start from chicken scratch. And I should note that both projects are completely customizable. I'm going to open the main template here. Uh, this one will work in CS5 and up, but I want to warn you, if you're using CS5 or CS6, you're going to notice that the customization controls have a label on them that says missing. Well, they're not missing, and they're right there, and everything still works perfectly fine, but just be aware of that. And if you're already working on a project and you'd like to import the effect into your current project, just go to File and Import and select the project file and click Open. So you can see we have some instructions here for getting started. We don't need that. Uh, you'll want your Effect Controls panel available. Uh, so if you don't see it, go to Window and Effect Controls. And make sure this panel is really big because there are some long control names and you'll need to see those. And uh, you can see all of our species here in the project panel. Just open the one you want. Uh, so let's go over these different comps in here uh, so you'll know which one to choose for your animation. You should know that all of the flocks in these folders are already set up to fly in a way that imitates that particular species. Um, I've adjusted the controls so that uh, the way they flap their wings and the way the flock flies, it's already set up. So let's take a gander at uh, the sparrow. I think, I think that's the one people will use the most. Uh, it's just kind of a good all-purpose bird. So the sparrow has a one-segment option, a four-segment, eight segments, and 15 segments. That refers to how many layers make up a single bird. 
so you can choose the level of quality that you want. Uh, the more segments it has, the higher the quality, but the longer it's going to take to render. Um, let's take a quick look at each of these. In this one segment option, each bird is a single layer. These are actually all nested compositions. No, seriously, that's what they're called. Uh, if I double click one, it opens a composition and you can see uh, inside is just this looping video of a bird flying in place. So this one's not a good option if you want your birds to fly towards the camera because you can see they're flat, they're 2D. So you'll want to keep these at a profile view. So this one is great for flocks uh, that are just flying by far in the distance. And it's fast, so you can have thousands of birds in your flock if you wanted to. Now if you don't like this angle of the bird in the movie, or you don't like the lighting or the way it's flapping its wings, uh, there is a way to easily make your own looping video. Each species that has the one segment flock option, and only the species that tend to fly in large flocks has it. But if there is a one segment option, then you'll see a folder inside this segments folder, and it's named one segment, uh, then whatever species. Open that up and uh, then you'll see a comp named export new movie, where you can customize your bird and then export your own looping movie. Just be sure to read this instructions comp uh, because there are a few steps you gotta take. You can't just swoop in here and wing it. There's a procedure for this kind of stuff. Let's open the four segment option. Uh, I've already got a bird front and center so you can see it clearly. So this one is 3D. Uh, it's got a couple images that make up the body and a couple images for the wings. Now, maybe you're thinking, that doesn't look like a bird. It looks like some kind of cardboard cutout. Well, it turns out this is all you really need to make a realistic looking bird when they're in the distance and moving fast. So uh, you can look at it from any angle and it's going to look like it has mass. Um, so this four segment option is, is also good if you want large flocks of birds in the distance um, if you're viewing them at an angle instead of just a profile view. All right, this eight segment option is an improvement. Uh, you can see now the wings have joints where they bend as they flap, so it gives a much more realistic flight. And finally, the 15 segment option. Uh, this one is just like the eight segment option with two joints on each wing, but uh, this one uses different images for the tops and bottoms of the wings and the bird's body. Now this isn't so important if your birds are really small in your animation. And uh, actually for this sparrow, I wasn't even able to get an image for the bottom of the wing. I just have the top of the wing. So this comp is kind of overkill for the sparrow. But if you take the macaw, for example, a macaw is blue on the top and orange on the bottom. So the 15 segment option is definitely the best choice for the macaw. And all the other birds, uh, they have different top and bottom images as well. So. It could be that little bit of extra detail that uh, maybe people don't notice it directly, but it, it helps add a degree of realism to the animation. So uh, 15 layers per bird, that might sound like a lot of layers, uh, especially if you want a flock of 20 birds. Um, but really that's that would just be 300 layers and After Effects will have no problem with that. I was frequently rendering out comps with 1,000, 2,000, and even 3,000 layers. Um, it does take longer, but if you can render it overnight, then why not, right? So let's take a look at these 15 layers that make up a bird. I'll change this to source name, and you can see what each layer is. We've got a body bottom image, and a body top image, and body profile, and then a bunch of wing segments. Uh, these can all be found in the segments folder in here along with the images used for the bird. I'll go back to the layer names and you can see these segments are all numbered, one through 15. All the segments of each bird have to stay together and they have to stay in order, which is important when you're adding birds to the, fl to the flock. So let's talk about adding birds. These yellow layers at the top make up the leader bird. And then all the blue layers under it are the follower birds, which all follow the leader. To add birds to your flock, you duplicate the follower birds. Now there is a correct way to do this so that you don't get errors, so watch closely. I'll scroll to the bottom and select the segment one layer of the last bird, and then shift select the segment 15 layer, and then copy them, control or command C, 
And then I'll select the sky layer at the bottom and then paste, Control or Command V. Don't select the last segment first because uh, that'll screw up the order. And don't just duplicate the layers with Command D because that'll screw up the order. Uh, what you can do though to speed things up is select multiple birds at once. I'll open the uh, four segment comp and I'll select the segment one layer at the top and then go all the way to the bottom and select the segment four layer of the last bird. So now I've got four birds selected. So I'll copy those and paste them to the bottom and this is ready to go. Now, if, if you're weird like me, it's gonna really bug you that the bird numbers are no longer in order. We've got bird nine up here and bird six down here. Uh, but that doesn't affect the functionality because the segments are, of each bird are in the right order. Let's go over how to make these birds fly where you want. The uh, follower birds all follow the leader bird. So they go where the leader goes and they tilt and turn as the leader does. And they flap its wings just like the leader bird does. But it's all on, on a delay. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. But my point is to make the whole flock fly in a certain direction, you just need to animate the leader bird and the follower birds will follow. All the segments are parented to the top segment, so we'll just open the position property of that top layer by selecting it and typing the P key. And you can see there are already a couple keyframes here to make the birds fly across the screen. So you can add more keyframes by using the pen tool. Uh, be sure to use a 3D view pop-up here to see the scene from different angles because that will help you position the keyframes in 3D space. So let's migrate over to the control layer. This is how you're going to customize the wing flapping and flying behavior of your flock. Now, all the flocks in this template have the same controls. I've included a PDF in your zip file called Customization Guide, uh, which gives a detailed description of each control, so you can always reference that if you need to. Or you can just pay attention because in a minute I'm gonna show you how all of these controls work uh, by starting with a motionless flock of starlings and then adding motion to them with the controls one by one. The very first control on the control layer is the random seed control. And this one will give completely new random results to the bird's position and flight behavior. So uh, if you've previewed a flock and you're not quite happy with how it turned out, just change this to any random number and you'll get new random results. So in bird appearance, you can control the scale of the birds and scale variation so they're not all exactly the same size. And then the body turn control. Uh, this is an important one that uh, you should keyframe so that your birds tilt whenever they turn. Body angle will point the bird upward or downward. Uh, you probably won't need that because as you may have noticed the birds automatically point in the direction that they're moving uh, because auto orient is turned on for each parent bird layer. And uh, this next checkbox here enables preview mode. Preview mode puts the leader bird prominently in front of your camera to give you a sneak peek of your customizations as you adjust the body and the wing flapping. This is just for the purpose of previewing your customizations, so remember to turn it off when you're done customizing. And uh, also I should mention that if you've rotated your camera, you might not see the bird. So if that's the case, just switch to front view and you should see it. I recommend you isolate just the leader bird when you're in preview mode, and then all these other birds can't get in your way. Uh, you can use this XY rotation control to see the bird at different angles. Um, these only rotate the bird in preview mode, so it won't affect your final animation. And the rest of these, you can just uh, use these to adjust the position of the wings. Again, these settings will already be set to where they need to be by default, so you can just uh, you can make your own adjustments if you need to. And if you ever want to go back to the default settings, you can simply click the reset button at the top. I'm going to keep preview mode on and look at these wing flapping controls. Some of these require an explanation. Uh, the first one, beats per second, uh, that's how fast the wings flap. This one comes with a warning, because if you look up the actual speed of your species, you'll, you'll see that a lot of the smaller bird species flap their wings at 10, uh, 20, or even 30 beats per second. And I didn't find that those speeds looked as good when rendered in After Effects. And if you set it above six, the wing bending starts to get out of sync because uh, these wings will automatically start to bend during their up flap. But that starts to break down the higher this beats per second control is set to. 
If you do want a faster wing flap speed, then I recommend you turn down the wing bending a bit down here to make the wings more rigid. Otherwise, I would recommend that you just keep the speed at 6 beats per second or less, which I think looks better anyway. Next is this group of controls for the amplitude. Uh, these are how you can customize both the degree of the arc that the winds can flap, as well as how long they should flap versus how long they should be still to imitate the bird just gliding through the air. I've set a number of these controls to zero, so the wings are rigid and it's easier to see what's going on. So let's define amplitude first. These wings are oscillating up and down. Amplitude is just the extent or amount of an oscillation. So you can see if I set the amplitude to 25, uh, we get a little bit of wing flapping. If I set it to 100, we get more oscillation. What's cool is if we make the amplitude fluctuate, we can make the bird flap its wings, then glide, then flap, then glide, and so on. So we've got this amplitude wiggle amount and amplitude wiggle speed. I'll set the amount to 200 and the speed to 2. So now, with 100 as its starting point, the amplitude will randomly fluctuate an amount of 200 at a rate of about 2 times per second. Of course, this presents a problem because the amplitude might get as low as negative 100 or as high as 300. So we need to put a cap on it uh, so the amplitude won't go too low or too high. So I'll set the maximum at 120 and the minimum at 5. So now, even when the bird's gliding, uh, the wings aren't totally motionless because the minimum is set to 5. Now if you want the wings to flap more up here than down here, um, you can just adjust the starting angle for that oscillation with this control, angle, wiggle, start point. Next we have the wing bending controls where you can set the minimum and maximum amount of bend at each joint. And you can probably just leave these at the default settings. For the wing rotation control, I'm going to turn our bird to a profile view. You can see this set the rotation angle of the wing. And uh, if you increase this auto rotation control, you can see the wings automatically rotate forward and backward as they flap in a, a way that would generate forward thrust. Now we'll add a bit of body bobbing and you can see that the body goes up and down as a reaction to the wings flapping. Lastly, we have this manual wing flapping option. Maybe uh, you want complete control over the wing flapping rather than going with the randomness of these oscillation controls. Uh, you can just check this box to turn on manual control and then you can keyframe the amount here to make the wings flap. Or just uh, add a little wiggle to them with a wiggle expression. Um, which is what I did with the larger birds of prey in the uh, animations where they're just gliding. So let's move on to these wiggle controls down here. As I explained before, to make your flock fly where you want, you keyframe the position property of the leader bird. But to make it look realistic, you also need some uh, random movement to the flock and to the individual birds. So that's where the wiggle comes in. So what is wiggle? That's a wiggle. And yeah, sure, that's a wiggle too. But I'm talking about the wiggle expression. Uh, if you're not familiar with wiggle in After Effects, you will be after using this template because the entire motion of the birds is governed by wiggle expressions. Don't worry, it's a really easy concept and you don't actually have to write any expressions. It's all built into the controls. So uh, you can see that we actually have five types or levels of wiggle that we can apply to our birds and it really gives you a lot of control to imitate every kind of flock behavior. To uh, illustrate what multiple levels of wiggle can do, I've set up this simple example and I'm going to really quickly show you uh, what wiggle is all about. So I've got this circle shape and I'm going to add a simple wiggle expression to its position. So I'll type the P key to bring up the position property and I'll alt click the stopwatch icon to open an, an expression box. And in there I'll type wiggle, uh, parentheses, 2, comma, 500, and parentheses. So it's going to randomly wiggle a distance of 500 pixels at a speed of 2 times per second. I can slow it down if I use a decimal value on the speed, like 0 0.5. 
Now I'll add another level of wiggle by adding a second expression to the anchor point value, which can also affect the circle's position. This time I'll say wiggle 20 times per second, wiggle just 30 pixels. So now if I play it back, we can see it has the larger slower motion of the first wiggle and it added the smaller faster wiggle of that second expression. And I know that doesn't look anything like a bird. It's just a, an example, so relax. But that's the wiggle expression. See, it's not that hard. It's a finch. All right, so I'm starting from scratch here. Uh, there's no wiggle, no keyframe movement, and no delay yet. So it's just a bunch of birds on top of each other in the middle of the screen. I'll open the wiggle one section of controls, uh, which I recommend you use for the larger random movements of the flock. You can see we can control the amount of wiggle in each dimension. I'll increase the amounts, and I'll set the speeds to about 0 0.5. They're all occupying the same space, um, but up at the very top we have this control position delay and followers. I'll turn that up to 100 milliseconds. So each bird is 100 milliseconds behind the bird in front of it. So this determines how tightly synchronized a flock is. For a starling murmuration where all the birds seem to think and move as one, this would be set really low. Uh, if you want a really long trail of birds, you could set it really high. You'll probably notice that for the default settings of all the flocks, I've got the position delay set to a negative value. So the, the follower birds actually move to the front. And that's because I used keyframes for the main movement of those flocks uh, rather than the wiggle controls. To show you what I mean, I'll add two keyframes uh, to move this flock out of the frame. And I'll play it back. So you can see all these birds are just kind of hanging out here uh, because they're on a delay. So if you want, you can set the delay to a negative value and then uh, these birds will look forward in time to see what the leader bird will do and then they'll start doing it. All right, we're, we're back in our sparrow comp. Um, we're going to have to do something about those wings because they're flapping owl at the same time. Right underneath the position delay is the wing flap delay in followers. I'll set that to 50 milliseconds. And now the wings move in a wave. It's kind of like a caterpillar. Um, a really synchronized flock might flap their wings and glide at more or less the same time. But I, I usually like the wing flapping to be totally random, so I'll set this to a really high value, like 3,333. I learned to use weird numbers like that, because then it's less likely that you'll see a pattern in the, in the movement of the wings. All right, so this next level of wiggle says flock spread, and it's how we're going to spread the birds out and create the shape of our 3D flock. So for each dimension, horizontal, vertical, and depth, uh, we have a spread amount, a spread wiggle amount, and a wiggle speed. I'll spread the birds out in each dimension. And then the wiggle controls allow you to make the birds scatter and then rush back toward each other and then start to scatter again, which uh, is a behavior that sometimes looks good on the smaller birds, like these sparrows. See, birds of a feather really do flock together. Next we have wiggle three, minor flock movement. So this can add just another level of smaller movements to your large movements, just like uh, the example I showed you with a, the blue circle. And this one is only in two dimensions, X and Y, so horizontal and vertical. I use this to get the look of birds that quickly climb in altitude a little and then when they flap their wings and then quickly lose altitude when they glide. Uh, it's something small birds do when they fly. So uh, with this animation I made, if you have an, an eagle eye, you can see the birds are constantly moving up and down. Wiggle four individual movements is perhaps the most important of all the wiggles. It adds a random wiggle to each individual bird. And uh, this one works in three dimensions. Um, I usually set the amount to something high like 300 and the speed to something low like 0 0.3. Finally, Wiggle 5 Murmuration uh, is another excellent control that has multiple uses. I added this one to get more realistic starling murmurations because um, I made a murmuration and then I had that moment. 
You know that moment uh, when you realize that four types of wiggle just don't cut it? Well, I had that moment. And so then I added the fifth wiggle, but on the delay for each bird. So if I put 300 for the amount, 0.3 for the speed, and 100 for the delay, the leader bird will wiggle 300 pixels, about 0.3 times per second, and then 100 milliseconds later, bird two will make that same movement. And another 100 milliseconds later, bird three will do it, and so on. So one result of that is you can have a long trail of birds and different sections of the trail can be shifting in different directions. Or if you need another level of wiggle to add to individual birds, and I found I often did, then you can crank up the delay to some crazy high value and uh, it's going to look like each bird is wiggling completely randomly. And I should note that this last wiggle is just on the X and Y dimensions. So that's all the customization controls. Um, if you can sparrow another moment or two, let me go over a simple way that you can composite these flocks into your shots. Here we have the eight segment geese flock uh, with just a few geese flying in a straight line and they look so good, uh, they probably gave you goosebumps. I have my footage here, which I imported, and I'll drag it into my flock comp and put it all the way at the bottom. And I can hide the sky layer. So they're closer than I want, um, but I'd rather not decrease their scale because then I'd have to adjust their speed as well. So instead I'll just move my camera so it's farther away. You can use the camera tools here, or just type the C key to alternate between the different camera tools. This one moves it farther away, so just click and drag, and I can hold down shift to increase the amount that it moves. Now I'll hit the C key a couple more times to get the camera orbit tool, and I'll orbit my camera around to find a good angle. I'll hit it again and get the camera move tool, so I can move the camera down and over and if you want, you can adjust the camera position over here as well. The idea is to match the position and angle of the camera in your footage. Uh, so you can also adjust the rotation uh, to tilt the camera if needed. And then next, you may want to adjust the lighting of the scene to match the light source in your footage. So maybe you're just a little After Effects fledgling and you're not familiar with light layers. So here's a rundown. We have two light layers here. The ambient affects the overall brightness of the birds, and the sun is a point light, so it will create shadows. If you want it to actually cast shadows onto other 3D layers, you can double click it and choose Cast Shadows. To control whether a 3D layer receives those shadows, select the layer and type the A key two times fast, and you can adjust the material settings. All right, so in my footage, it looks like the sun is way back here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to look at my scene from the right side. I'll switch this to right, and then zoom out a bit. You can see my camera is in front of the scene and down low, and my sun is also in front. So I'll change its position so it's way in the back. I'll go back to my camera view and I'll move the sun to the left some more. If you double click these light layers, you can increase their brightness or uh, change their color to match the scene. So I could make this a little bit of a yellowish color if I want, so it's more like a sunset. And if you really want to take it to the nest level, if the uh, birds are far in the distance, chances are they should be a little lighter because of the atmospheric haze. So they should be blending into the background a little bit. What I would do is export the birds with a transparent background and then bring them back into After Effects and add your color correction. So I'll hide the background and I'll add this to the Adobe Media Encoder queue, which works a lot faster than adding it to the render queue in After Effects, I've discovered. And I'll click on the format here and I want QuickTime. And for video codec, I'll choose Animation. Then click 8 bits per channel plus alpha, then OK, and set it to render. All right, I brought my exported clip in, and I'll put it in front of my background, and I'll add a tint effect to my flock. And for both colors, I'll choose a lighter color from the background somewhere on the horizon. 
and I'll turn the amount down until I'm happy with it. All right, I'm getting near the end here. Uh, let me show you how to do a murmuration. You can find the murmuration comp in the Starling folder. Open that up. This is a uh, one segment comp, obviously. Uh, there's a thousand birds in here, and I recommend you actually add another thousand. You can just select all the blue layers and duplicate them. Uh, increasing that population will make the trail of birds a little longer, which is good. And uh, if, if you don't add a thousand, then I recommend you double the uh, position delay in followers. And that will give you a little bit of a longer trail. Keep in mind that 2,000 birds is going to make this comp run really slow. Slower than what you see in the video because I uh, edit out the parts where it's loading for the sake of time. But 2,000 is a good number and also we're going to be doubling and tripling them up a little later to increase the numbers. It's not going to be like a lot of murmurations you've probably seen where there's a million or more starlings, but we can do about 10,000 or so pretty easily, which is like the nest best thing. The uh, first thing I would do is change the random seed to some random value, and that'll give you a totally unique murmuration. And then set your out point. If you have the time, you may want to make this comp 20 seconds or more, and that way you can pick and choose the best parts of the clip uh, to use. You also might want to preview a single frame every second or two, uh, just to make sure that the flock stays in your composition and doesn't get the edges cut off. Uh, if it does, you can just increase the size of the comp. And then when it's ready to go, we'll need to export this comp with the alpha channel, so make sure it has a transparent background and send it to a Adobe Media Encoder. And then it's going to take forever to open Adobe Media Encoder, so go make yourself a delicious sandwich. And so now it's open, and uh, you can just use the same settings I showed you earlier. But again, when you click the format, uh, because our comp was so huge, it's going to take a super long time again. So you'll want to go out and buy, like, maybe a pie, um, because you'll need something to wash the sandwich down. And we've skipped ahead. I've rendered 30 seconds of 2,000 birds, and it took a little over three hours. Uh, when I tried to render that same comp inside of After Effects using the render queue, it was going to take 25 hours. So I definitely uh, recommend using Adobe Media Encoder for this. I have my clip here, which I'll place over my footage. And I'll move it to where I want and maybe scale it down a little bit. I'll add my tint effect like I showed you earlier. And next I'll duplicate this clip and slide it over maybe 10 frames. I'll rotate it slightly, move it over a little bit. Uh, if you want to adjust the scale slightly, you can do that. This is just to add some variation to the flock so it doesn't uh, just look like an exact duplicate. If you want, make a third copy and repeat the process. And then duplicate it again, uh, but this time slide it way over so that we have a completely different pattern of flight. And I'll duplicate that one and slide it over a few frames. So now we have two separate groups flying their own separate pattern here. And I think it looks good when they fly over each other. Um, so to keep the two groups together, you may want to animate the position of the second group to stay in the general area of the first group. Be sure to convert the keyframes to Easy Ease keyframes to keep the movement smooth. It's going to take a little experimentation. Um, since their flight is random, some parts you'll probably like more than other parts. Okay, I'm going to end by sharing just a few tips that might help your workflow or improve your animations. First of all, and this one really makes a lot of sense in the murmuration comp, but if you have a ton of layers here and they're getting in the way, uh, you can see I have the shy switch set for all of the follower birds. So you can just turn on shy up here and it'll hide all those layers. You'll still see the birds up here, but down here it'll make it a lot tidier. Another switch here that will improve your animations is motion blur. 
The bird layers already have motion blur enabled, so you can just click this motion blur button before you set it to render, and it'll add a slight blur to the fast moving birds, which helps make the effect more believable. Uh, if you want to change the amount of motion blur, just open the composition settings panel uh, by typing Control or Command K. And then in the advanced section, uh, you can adjust the shutter angle or the quality. One cool feature is that every bird in your flock can be independently moved or animated. So this is helpful for creating stray birds uh, so that they're not all clumped together in a neat little group. All you do is select the first segment of any bird and you can adjust its position property to put it where you want. Um, this can also be used if you need your birds to be in a specific formation. So like this V formation of geese, uh, which you can find in the demo project file, these birds are all just positioned into that V formation and then their random movement is turned way down so that they stay in that formation. I want to emphasize the importance of the body turn control uh, because if your birds do any turns at all, the body turn becomes that magic ingredient that really brings the animation to the next level. Here's how I recommend you use it. Um, create your motion path on the leader bird first with uh, whatever turns you want and then isolate your leader bird and keyframe this body turn control so that the bird tilts left whenever it turns left and it tilts right whenever it turns right. And then the follower birds will then make that same tilt when they get to that turn. <laughs> if your animation has a profile view of your birds, uh, you may see an ugly stripe going across the body. So uh, that's the bird's body bottom or body top layers. Um, so what you can do is just hide the, the body layers on each bird and it will look a lot better. If all you see is a profile view, then it's not going to have any negative effect on how they look. And it'll render a little faster, so you can kill two birds with one stone. This one may be obvious to a lot of you, but the solo switch comes in really handy in this template. If you have a lot of birds in your comp, and the slow speed is starting to ruffle your feathers a bit, you can just isolate a single layer while making uh, changes on the controls, and it'll go much faster. Or if you want to preview your flock with the changes, uh, just isolate a few of your birds and then preview, which will save a lot of time. <laughs> and last of all, uh, probably the best advice I can give you, if you plan on doing any customization with the controls on the control layer, definitely look up some reference footage online. Find a shot of the species you're animating and then try to imitate their flight behavior and their speed, and uh, it's going to look a lot more realistic then. All right, that does it for me. I'm gonna take off now and work on finishing the next template, which is swarms. It's like this one, but you know, with bugs. And also schools uh, is already finished. You can check that out now over at creationeffects.com. And there's lots of other cool stuff for After Effects at creationeffects.com, like 3D books, VHS effects, glitches, title effects, old film, growing flourishes, fire, auroras, networking effects, and over 40 artifacts so that uh, you can convert your footage into animated artwork in any medium. Mm -hmm.